and welcome back to my homestead. Today I'm in the kitchen because I'm going to be making homemade strawberry jam, a very simple process without using any pectin or any gelatin or anything like that to thicken it up. This is going to be thickened up by its natural sugar and juices. So let me show you how I'm going to make it. This is kind of a lengthy process, but a super easy process. This is a strawberry season and go pick them on your local farms, but also try to grow them because they're kind of getting expensive. So I wash them and I strain them in a colander to remove extra fluid and I remove the stems. Why? Because the stems do add a lot to the weight. Okay, for each pound of strawberries, I need seven ounces of sugar. And this is not going to be what that super, super concentrated gem that I grew up on of having one to one ratio. One pound of sugar, one pound of berries. This is going to be a little bit different, a lot less sugar. So let's begin and I need to weigh everything out. But if you're going to be doing one pound of strawberries, seven ounces of sugar. And if my math is correct, I need for my amount of strawberries I need one point how much 1.9 of sugar all right hopefully my math is correct uh, and if not oh well it will be sweeter all right so we have 1.9 of sugar so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to be sprinkling the sugar all over my berries okay just like this and I'm going to stir and I'm going to be stirring this to make sure everything is mixed so the strawberries begin to release juice okay so now I'm just gonna stir everything together and by osmosis this um, the sugar will pull out a lot of the liquid a lot of juices from the strawberries now some people take knife and they chop them very very small well you know that's all nice but when you have a big batch of strawberry jam that's kind of time-consuming so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my blender, it's uh, immersion blender, and I'm just going to blend everything together to speed up this process. So I think that's enough. Okay, so at this point, let me put this away so I'm not making a mess here. At this point, what I'm gonna do is just let this sit together and continue doing its thing. Uh, because the sugar will completely, completely dissolve and you will not uh, be able to taste it on your tongue anymore because it's not going to be greedy anymore. Um, so the three ingredients I'm going to need for this jam, as you guys know, is the strawberries, sugar, and fresh lemon juice. And the reason why I'm going to use very little of lemon juice is because the lemon juice is going to help to maintain this beautiful color and it's not going to allow the strawberry, um, the jam to crystallize because a lot of times homemade jams crystallize a little bit and when you open the jar, there's like some of that crystallization and it's kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like it. So the juice is gonna, lemon juice is gonna help to prevent that. All right, I am not gonna be using any pectin to thicken this up or any gelatin. Uh, and also guys, be careful, sometimes the commercially prepared jams have all of those ingredients and plus. And uh, some of those ingredients, if they are in a small amount, they don't have to be listed at all, uh, including food coloring. And as you guys know, some of the food coloring can cause some um, adverse, unpleasant things uh, in your health. So try to avoid them, at least that's what I do. All right, so release a lot of this juice and before I put it away to sit for a little while, I'm gonna be adding fresh lemon juice. And if you only have a small amount of, um, like say a pound or so, all you need is about a teaspoon or so of fresh, freshly squeezed lemon juice. But I have a lot more, so I'm gonna be using juice from a whole lemon, all right? Trust me, it's not that much, but it's gonna to help to maintain that beautiful color without adding any artificial colors. And it's gonna to help to prevent that sugarization, that crystallization of sugar. All right, that's it. Stir this up. So now I'm just gonna put a cover on and I'm gonna let this sit 
for, I don't know, an hour, two hours and let more juices to come out of the strawberries before I do anything else. Uh, if your kitchen is very hot, put it in a cool place or even a refrigerator if you want to. I'm just going to put it somewhere where it's cool for, I don't know, an hour or so, maybe two hours and let this marry together. All of these delicious ingredients will marry together. Okay, friends, so this set for about an hour and more juice has come out. More juice has come out and the smell is absolutely amazing. So now I put it on the stove and I'm going to turn the heat on. And I'm going to put it on high heat and I'm pretty much going to keep it on high, medium, high heat the whole time. So now, you know, pull up a chair, sit next to your stove, be friends because uh, you're going to be here for the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe even 45 minutes. And it all depends on how big the amount of uh, jam you're making and on your um, pot. Because my pot is very wide pot, so that means that more liquid will evaporate faster. But if you are using a very narrow vessel, then it will take longer. Okay, so also I need to stir this all the time. Gently, kind of like sitting here talking to it and stirring because you don't want anything to burn and stick to the bottom. And also the reason why I need to keep stirring because since I am not adding any pectin or any other thickener, and by the way, if you only knew the amount of thickeners um, they're adding to commercial prepared gems, you would think twice and start making your own, I'm telling you. So because I'm not adding any other additional thickener, and this has to be uh, its own thickener, this particular gem itself, the berry itself, has to create its own natural pectin, okay? So this is supposed to be its own thickener. So yeah, I'm going to be sitting here, stirring it, talking to it, you know, telling you the stories or whatever. And that's what I'm going to do for a while until it comes to a boil. And I'll show you what to do when it comes to a boil. So we're continuously stirring and it's coming, the, the heat is rising, it's on high heat right now. And it's not boiling yet, but you can see already, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the, keep stirring honey, um, uh, so you guys can see the that white pale kind of uh, foam forming. Don't throw it away. You know, I know there's a lot of Russian um, recipes that I grew up with and they would teach, yes, always skim it and throw it away. But this is the pectin. This is the natural pectin that berries create. So let that foamy stuff be. Let it be. Let it stay. And actually, it's going to become a very important piece when we're going to know if the jam is done cooking. Okay? So um, as we're cooking this and stirring, and I was just sharing with my daughter and with my little great niece, sharing a story that when I grew up, and especially in the summer, uh, when I was home from school, Mama often would share stories with me about different different things, different life lessons. So today, I reminded a story about patience. So as we are stirring this jam, and it's going to take forever, just like, you know, 40 minutes or so, stirring, standing in, uh, in the front of the hot stove, it teaches you patience, just like the story about the walls of Jericho. If any of my friends know that story, um, you know that when something is promised to you, even if it's scary, even if something is so unachievable and almost like there's no way it's going to happen, there's no way. But if this was promised to you and you know that this is designed to be in your life, it will happen. You just have to trust the plan. Even if it takes you seven days, seven months, seven years to walk around that Jericho walls and be obedient to what you were told, it will come to pass because it was promised to you. Again, friends, if you know the story about Jericho, um, I'm glad. But if you don't, look it up. It will teach you that sometimes you have to be very obedient. So even if it sounds ridiculous and sounds inachievable, you know, stay the course because it will come to pass it will, if that was part of the design for your life. So trust the big picture, even if it makes no sense sometimes. All right, so we're stirring this, stirring. It's almost coming to a boil. I begin to see bubbles everywhere, and I, um, we're going to keep stirring it. 
we're gonna keep stirring it and guess what we're gonna be looking for I'm not turning down the heat right now I'm waiting for all of this uh, mass to begin to rise if it begins to boil it's gonna start rising like a hat almost I know it's kind of funny but it's gonna start rising like a hat keep stirring keep stirring so it doesn't stick to the bottom all right friends it came to a boil I'm gonna adjust my camera here it came to a boil and I don't know if my camera is doing it justice but the color is absolutely beautiful and I am contributing that to lemon because it's gonna stay that vibrant red strawberry color so I set the timer because I want to know how long it's going to take us from the moment it has come to a boil until it's finished. And again, as I mentioned before, guys, this may be very different timing for everyone, depending on how thick bottom your pot is, how wide it is, and how much mass of strawberries you had. But I will let you know what it's going to be for me having four and a half pounds of strawberries. So this has been boiling now for 19 minutes and unfortunately I missed uh, recording when all of that foam started foaming up and it like co collected here in the middle and I totally missed recording that for you guys, I apologize. But I've been stirring and uh, now I see a whole lot less foam now, that little white foam thing that I was showing you guys before and it's less and less and less of it. So it's been 19 minutes and I think I'm gonna cook for a few more minutes, maybe 10 more minutes. All right, this is getting much more thicker and more gelatinous and you will notice that there is no more white foam anywhere. Sorry, I'm gonna take over, honey. So now we're gonna do a little trick to see if it's done, if it's thick enough, if it has uh, cre turned into nice jam that it's supposed to be. So I don't want it to stir, uh, stick to the bottom. So I have this white plate that I put in the freezer for about, what, three minutes now? So to get it nice and cold, and I'm gonna get a little bit of this jam, just like this, okay? And I'm gonna smear around this jam, okay? Because I want it to quickly cool off, all right? I have to continue stir it, I want it to burn to the bottom. And now it's cooling off fast, I don't know, can you guys see in this? You wanna, do you wanna switch with me, babe? Mm -hmm. Come over there, thank you. Just keep stirring it. And I'm going to run my finger just like this and see how it doesn't run back together again? It stays apart. That means it's, it's ready to be jarred in a little sterilized jars now. The jam is ready. Do you wanna taste it? Mm. How is it? Zetsy. Is it delicious? Yes. You like it? Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's not terribly sweet, it's perfect. All right, honey. So I'm gonna turn off the heat mm -hmm. because there's no more foam, but I'm gonna keep stirring just because uh, the pot is still hot and it's still, co it's still cooking. So I'm going to keep stirring it until it's, uh, there was no more danger of burning because I have prepared my jars. I have washed them and sterilized them because in my culture I grew up without water bath canning jams but you know now that I live in this country and I don't want to scare anybody I'm gonna be water bath canning but I just want you guys to look at the consistency of this jam notice how those big chunks of of uh, strawberries are gone but yet it's still not jelly it's still very gelatinous and you still see little tiny pieces um, of the berry in its perfect perfect consistency all right it's time to jar it I'm going to scoop I probably don't need so many goodness gracious I don't need so many uh, jars but I'd rather be ready for more than I need them all right, so I'm scooping them into hot sterilized jars. Just keep in mind that whenever you guys putting hot content, it has to go into a hot jar. Otherwise, it will crack and break and you're gonna lose all of your hard work and it's gonna be super painful. All right, how much am I gonna fill up? To that little shoulder, which is about half an inch of head space. All right, and on to the next. I definitely did not need so much, so many jars, but it's okay. It's a nice thick jam and it's going to be absolutely delicious to spread on a piece of bread with some tea or put it on a little biscuit and it's going to be absolutely delicious. You know, growing up we did not have any fresh 
fruit or vegetables all winter long living in the old Soviet Union so we had to rely on homemade jams and jellies and every single housewife didn't matter where they lived in a city or in a country knew how to make delicious jams unfortunately those skills are being lost today because we rely so much on commercially prepared jams and it's not the same thing at all okay I'm gonna move this out of the way I don't think I need them so oh my goodness out of four and a half pounds of strawberries we're gonna have only only three half pints oh no pints these are pints half pints only three little pints okay so I'm just gonna wipe the edge make sure there's no sugar content left okay so maybe everything's nice and clean this one is not full so I'm going to uh, when it cools off I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we're gonna eat it soon all right but the rest I'm going to cover with my covers finger tight oh it's hot finger tight so it means it's not crazy tight but just finger tight okay and I'm gonna put them in my water bath canner for 10 minutes how many of you guys grew up visiting your grandmother and she would have and she would have jam just like this on her table at all times like all the time ready to be eaten with some tea well today I have some iced tea here because it's a hot humid day in June and I put a little bit on the bread just like growing up just like this we're gonna give it a taste okay oh my word it's delicious you wanna try yes all right here we go it's delicious mmm -hmm. so so good all right listen homemade jam this is a strawberry season and if you want to eat raw hey listen fresh strawberries are wonderful packed with vitamins packed with good good nutrition but if you want to preserve for cold winter months you can always make the uncooked version and I have video when I made blueberry uh, jam uncooked blueberry jam and I'm gonna put a link above and a link in the description but if you want them any this can be made with this uh, with any berry basically but if you want to make the old-fashioned strawberry jam follow my recipe it's super easy and it's so delicious it's thick it doesn't drip nothing falls no fillers no additives of whatsoever okay no thickness all natural three ingredients strawberry sugar and lemon and a little bit of love and patience and while you're cooking it share some stories with your kids so on this note friends I hope you're staying encouraged and try something new